Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk to you about how I use reference images when I'm creating my art or when I'm practicing. So we'll talk a little bit about where I get references from and how I tend to use them. When I'm looking to just sit down in my sketchbook, I oftentimes end up just scrolling through Pinterest for a ridiculous amount of time instead of using one of the many things I've already saved. That tends to happen a lot. For today, I kind of had a specific mood in mind that I wanted to capture, so I just found a reference image that I felt I could use to create that mood, and that's this one over here. It's the one I ended up going with. So you'll see that I'm going to be referencing a bit of the pose here for this character, and then taking a lot of creative liberties with the colors and the final atmosphere is going to change. I didn't do an exact likeness of this person. I usually don't, but I'm going to be referencing the pose, the angle of the head, and the facial structure quite a lot, and I find that references are really helpful for that. I'll also take a minute to swatch out some colors next to my little thumbnail here, just so I can think about what I'm going to want for this piece, and you'll see that the colors I ended up with changed a lot over time. When I'm looking for reference images, I usually find inspiration in a specific pose or, like I said, facial structure. Sometimes it's the mood or atmosphere of an image that I'll reference as opposed to what's actually there. And in the same vein, sometimes I'll just be inspired by the colors of an image or a setting or something that I see, and I'll want to use those colors to portray something specific. So I'm not always pulling just the image itself. Sometimes it's the emotion of an image or it inspires me to want to communicate something specific that I saw there. I know that sounds really vague, but that's literally as detailed as it gets in my head sometimes. So for this one in particular, I really liked the cropping of the photo, how the top of the head was kind of cut off, and you have these dark sections of hair on either side that kind of frame the face and keep it nice and central. I liked the expression here, so I'm playing around with that a little bit, and I liked the overall shape of the hair, so those are some of the things that I'm going to be pulling from here. And just so you guys know, the palette that I'm using here is paints from a bunch of different brands. I put this palette together a while ago, but I haven't used it very often lately, so I wanted to get back into it and experiment with it, which was actually a little bit tricky. There were some colors that I wasn't really used to working with and some colors that I've begun to rely on in other sets that I didn't have here, so it was a fun experiment overall, but there's paints in this palette from M. Graham and Sennelier and Daniel Smith. So anyway, when it comes to using references, especially in the modern age with the internet and social media, one of the biggest issues that people have is the morality of using references. So depending on where you got your images from, you don't always have the rights, like the the rights to a particular image, and that can cause a lot of controversy amongst artists, and it's really not something that I want to dive too deep in here or even to start any arguments about. I think the important thing is that you're not stealing the image itself and claiming that it's yours, or specifically copying what you see in an image and then claiming that as your own personal creation. You definitely want to credit the source of an image when you are doing a direct copy. It's important to let people know where that information comes from. And then of course there's always the argument of 
you know, with this painting here, do I have the quote unquote creative rights to sell this painting, you know, because the reference image isn't mine? And there's a lot of argument about things like that. But at the same time, someone could easily commission me to do a copy of the Mona Lisa for them. And as long as it's not the same dimensions as the actual original Mona Lisa, I have complete legal freedom to do that. It's, I don't know. I don't really want to talk about it. I don't really want to argue about it for sure. But here I am showing you a painting that I did with a reference, mostly for educational purposes today, because I wanted to talk to you about how I use them. For this piece here, I really liked that there was a lot of variations in color from the lighting from this particular piece. And Overall, I am using some of the color and the expression and the values within my reference to communicate the emotion that I felt from it and just something that I was kind of feeling in general. Again, sounds really vague, but that's just because it is. In my palette, I have Turquoise by M. Graham, and that color is so strong and so powerful. And because it has thalo blue in it, it's also very, very staining. So it was a bit of work to kind of manipulate that color and get it to move around relatively quickly. I had to work with it because it, as soon as that color hits the paper, it wants to just soak in and sit and stay right where you put it. You should definitely never feel guilty for using references. I mean, that's just part of learning. That's You have to look at things. You have to observe reality to know how to draw it or how to paint it. That's just part of learning. If I wanted to sit down and draw something like this on my own, I'm sure there are bits of the facial structure that I could get kind of accurate without a reference, but observing the pose and actually studying that and looking at the colors and the transitions and color temperature and where the values change, the best way for me to get that right is by using a reference. And that's not a handicap, it's not a crutch, it's not cheating to use a reference, it's just part of the creation process. One way to keep yourself in the clear if you are worried about weird little copyright things, I guess, or ownership rights to references is obviously to just take your own reference photos. I think about artists like James Gurney, who has a YouTube channel here, you guys may know him. He's the author of the Dinotopia books, and he does amazing, beautiful, imaginative realism. So of course he's he does lots of fantasy things, and also he obviously paints dinosaurs and things that don't exist in reality currently as we know it. And he took so many reference photos. He grabbed his neighbors and his friends and his family, and he had people dress up and pose for him, and he made little maquettes out of clay for his dinosaurs. He built his environments, and he did so much work so that he would have his own reference images. And he always paints from reference, whether he's painting and drawing directly from life on the scene somewhere, or he's creating reference images for magazines. It, it, reference is just part of his creative process, a massive part, way more than I'm sure the actual time it takes to paint sometimes. The sky is beautiful and so are you. I wanna make it up to you, start something new Yeah, I've been thinking of the parts I play for you And how I'm dreaming In talking about the piece itself, once I had kind of defined a bit more of the facial structure, I wasn't necessarily sure how I wanted to include the neck and shoulders of this portrait within the mood and atmosphere and the composition that I had in mind. And I ended up going with a little bit closer to like a floating head scenario where I just added a ton of really dark color to the entirety of the bottom of this piece. And I'm really happy that I did. It was really fun to just get a big flat brush out and start squishing paint around and moving things and laying in really dark colors. This piece, as with every other piece that I do, was an experiment and it was a lot of fun to work on. When I myself am using reference images, there tend to be a lot of different reasons why I would use a reference image. Obviously, the first and biggest one is to learn. If I have a picture of 
a portrait or especially like when you're doing figure drawing or something I want to see that pose I want to look at it if if somebody told you to draw a particular pose and you didn't have a reference it would be a lot more difficult especially if you're not a master and you're not really familiar with anatomy you know and that's not something that's just really deep seated in your brain it can be difficult to know even where to start so learning obviously is a really big reason to use references also just to observe to actually look at something and to see it outside of the act of drawing just looking at something and seeing what you can notice about it how does light shine through an ear or a leaf how do the colors of the mountains change as they disappear into the background and start to blend in with the color of the sky looking at a face whether it's from life or in a picture and seeing all of the different variations in hue and color you have to you have to be able to reference things to look at them this all seems like common sense and I feel like I'm just rambling a lot in this video but it's okay it's important I also use reference images to explore so when I want to learn something new or I want to capture something new like I said before that can be I want to learn how to draw cars which is honestly probably never gonna happen but if, if it was something like that the first thing I would do is start looking up reference images. Or if there's new colors I wanna use, I might start referencing other artists and looking how other artists use color or how they communicate value and atmosphere. You can also combine reference images to create an original concept. So I might take the pose from one image or the facial structure from another image, the colors from somewhere else and Frankenstein together, some original concept. I'm talking about really basic stuff here, to be honest, but it's important. And I just wanted to talk to you about it. It's really nebulous, really vague, and there's so many different directions you can come from when it comes to talking about reference material. Primarily, the most important thing is it's important. Don't be afraid of it. Don't feel guilty for using reference. I hope you guys have enjoyed the process of this painting. Uh, feel free to mute me at any time in any of these videos when I ramble. But anyway, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Like a lot